The perimeter with Adam Morrison is proudly presented by Owens Farms Piedmontese. Let me share a local Spokane secret that everyone needs to know about. Owens Farms Piedmontese beef. Trust me when I say this. You cannot beat this meat. It's tender. It's flavorful. It's some of the best beef you'll ever put into your mouth, period. And to top it off, when you eat it, you can say goodbye to the meat hangovers. That's because Piedmontese beef is lean and has much less cholesterol than your typical supermarket beef. It's a new year. It's time to start living your life with no regrets. Go to OFP.farm to reserve your half or whole order of premium Piedmontese beef today. Go to OFP.farm. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is produced independently and locally in Spokane, Washington by Spokast Studios. Our city, our stories. Visit www.spokast.com to learn more about how you can start your very own podcast today. Do you love beer and helping support our local community? then you need to check out Golden Handle Brewing. It's Spokane's first social purpose brewery dedicated to brewing delicious beer and supporting the people and organizations that make Spokane a better place. Lots of places donate a little bit of their revenue to community organizations, and that's a great thing. But at Golden Handle, we do it every single day. Each month, we pick a different community nonprofit and then donate $1 of every Golden Handle pint we sell for the entire month to that cause. Then the next month, we do it all again. So cheers to the Bulldogs and cheers to a more resilient community. Mention that the perimeter with Adam Morrison sent you and get a free perimeter sticker when you order any Golden Handle beer. Visit us at the Old Steel Barrel Taproom on the west end of downtown Spokane at 154 South Madison Street, Thursday through Monday, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. The perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you in sponsorship with Delicious Hamburgers. Did you know delicious hamburgers and fries are the freshest in Spokane? Their hamburgers are never frozen, and that's because it tastes better. There's not even a freezer in the restaurant. Their fries are always made to order and never set under a heat lamp. It's differences like this you can truly taste. Next time you're craving the freshest hamburgers and fries, head to the corner of Augusta and Division and ask for the perimeter combo. A triple delicious hamburger with grilled onions, pickles, and special sauce. It also comes with fries and your choice of a milkshake. Delicious. Taste the difference. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Turn up the tent. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Welcome to the Perimeter Season 2 Final Week. Sponsored by Owens Farms Piedmontese. Uh, Brendan, the producer, helped me out. Great season. We're going to recap it a little bit and recap the NCAA tournament. Um, UCLA game was pretty cool. Yeah, the UCLA game was great. It was uh, a whirlwind of uh, emotions. Yeah. And I was I was sitting in my living room watching it with my brother and, for lack of better terms, just having flashbacks of, mm-hmm. of your season. And I was just like... But it was it was just amazing. It was such a cool game. It was such a this makes the next game so disappointing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, obviously a fantastic season. That was a, a memorable game. It was. I mean, that's the third time in a row we've beaten them twice in the NCAA tournament, and those two NCAA tournament games were all time classics. And then, you know, mine was too. So like three out of the last four is we beat them in 2015. People keep forgetting that game. Yeah. Um, were all time classic games um, for television. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was a, a fun season. Um, I think the tenor of this season was was what if or mm. where are we going to end up type of deal at the start of the year because we had a lot of guys that were new to new to <clears throat> prominent positions, you know, minute wise and, and importance on the floor. Mm. Nolan Hickman played last year, didn't play a ton. Obviously, at Andrew Nemhart, he was playing behind. Um, who else? Julian Strother had to make a jump. You yeah. know, he, so, you know, he was great last year. He was great this year. But how big of a jump is he going to make? Mm-hmm. Obviously, Drew Timmy, we knew that for the most part was going to be great. But you, sometimes you never know. Like, obviously, 
Um, and then, you know, guys like Hunter and then Malachi Smith, we had no clue. We knew he was a great scorer at Chattanooga, but you know, how is he going to fit in? Same thing kind of with Rasheer Bolton was great last year, but it's also like when he was playing off of Andrew Nemhar. now the responsibilities, ball handling is going to be a little bit more and more emphasis on scoring. Um, we had no idea what Ben Gregg was going to give us. Um, and then Anton Watson was primarily a come off the bench guy and then he mm. was in, inserted in the starting role so we didn't know how he was going to react he too had a, a fantastic season i think the best season out of everybody as far as jump and improvement um but you know we started the season with a really daunting <clears throat> um, non-conference schedule which we have to do and and i never understand why people um are surprised by it or like if we lose some of those games get upset it's like well we have to play these tough games early to build up our ken palm and rpi or whatever mm -hmm. um and you might lose those yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying especially with the younger team um you know the the game on the aircraft carrier was a weird one we beat michigan state they ended up having a really good run in the nca tournament so that's a really good win kentucky ended up kind of getting their act together in the back half of the season had a good run as well even though they got you know what i'm saying like had a good season yeah <clears throat> where it ended up being a really good win for us you know take away the purdue debacle they were probably one of the favorites going in to win it mm -hmm. right so that was a understandable loss texas gets to an elite eight right yeah they get to elite eight right so uh, yeah and we play them on the road so like some of these losses early um and we talked about it if people are listening you know, we're like, well, you've already talked about this earlier. Well, we're kind of obviously recapping, but we talked about like, hey, these are games that we can win, but if we do lose them, it's not a, a surprise because we were, you know, guys were filling out roles that they weren't quite used to yeah. beforehand. Um, so I was really impressed with our growth throughout the, in the entire season. We we continued to make an upward trajectory, um, which was encouraging because sometimes if you get in um games or uh, rut's not the right word but like this, where you're not as successful as you used to be in the in the in the non-conference that can snowball and and mm -hmm. you know yeah affect guys confidence and stuff but our coaching staff did an excellent job of getting these guys on the right track and getting them uh you know ready to play good solid basketball throughout the season but uh you know i thought our non-conference was a lot of learning curves, a lot of, um, you know, guys growing into, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, growing into to roles and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I was pleasantly um, surprised by some of the guys' jumps from the, compared to the start of the season to the end. Nolan Hickman was a turnover machine early on, um, and I think that was just he was trying to make too many plays. It wasn't like uh, – I don't say that in a negative way. It was just the reality is what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. um, he really improved on taking care of the basketball as the season progressed and really got us to a spot where he's going to come down and make good decisions and, and have the flow of the game uh, under his control. And then, uh, you know, obviously Anton, I think, had the best improvement season overall. Um, scored the basketball well, looked really athletic, bouncy, shot it better from three than I think a lot of people expected um you know did all the dirty work that he normally does but he just did it with more pep in his step and it was nice to see um you know then obviously drew had a historic season we could talk about that we've talked about it a lot and it's not a knock but it's like everybody drew's one of the all-time greats and mm -hmm. um <clears throat> you know he had an all-time great season he backed it up and that's hard to do um you know i i think going in my my sophomore year i think i averaged 19 so then going into my junior year there was a lot of this kid could be an all-american blah blah you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so like it's harder than you think to like try to live up to it um you know because everybody's got you scouted and and know what you can do and there's a lot of pressure to to you know put up numbers and be efficient and still be you know kind of your own player too mm -hmm. um so i thought drew did a fantastic job of that um so yeah i mean i i thought as a totality this is a great season 31 and 6 elite eight eight straight sweet 16 so again i'm gonna say it like i don't know where everybody gets the they don't win in march thing i just don't understand where that comes from it's like 
<laughs> or then they're like, they need to play in a bigger conference. It's like, well, we're beating the teams that are in the bigger conference. Like the Big Ten hasn't won a national championship in years. I don't think they've been to a, a Final Four in a long time. And so what is that proof? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't understand where that always comes in as a valid argument. I think the outside influence of Twitter and other people talking about about Gonzaga that aren't Gonzaga fans gets creeps into the minds of Gonzaga fans. Yeah, and then like, point. and then they start repeating things. Cause I started seeing things repeated a lot over the tournament. Like, cause like a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of the media wants to call Gonzaga a blue blood program, which I think is rightfully so. I mean, they've been in the tournament for however, 20, 20, 23 years, 23 whatever, years. And like, row. and like, yeah, they haven't won a national championship but yet. We went to two national championship we the, games. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's just, it's one of those things. Like, I just think Gonzaga fans end up letting that, letting that negativity get in and then they just repeat it and they're like, yeah, you're right. Like, and then obviously in games like what happened against UConn, it doesn't help. Yeah. The narrative. The, the narrative. But, but it. <laughs> But we still made it to the Elite Eight. We yeah. still did. We still did. And UConn dismantled every team that they played in the tournament. Every single team. Yeah. Every team was a bad matchup for UConn. Yeah. You know, so, you know, like I said, overall great season. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Really proud. Like, if you're coming into this year and, uh, like, some of the Gonzaga fans, to be honest with themselves, are they really sitting here going, we're going to go to the Elite Eight this year? They're probably been like, we're probably going to get bounced in the second round. Like, I don't know some people thought that. Mm-hmm. And, some people said that to me, and I, I was always like, hey, man, I, we're not as elite with, you know, four first-round NBA players or, like, five NBA players on the roster, but these are also guys that are coming into their own and are going, going to improve as the season progresses mm-hmm. and exactly what they did. So I was like, just the verdict's not out. Like, just yeah, calm down early here. Like, there's no reason for us to lose our minds. Um, but, you know, I thought they did a great job of, uh, you know, taking care of business in the – the first two games, I thought that TCU matchup was really difficult for mm. them, um, and they they passed that test. And then the UCLA game was one of the all time classics with, you know, Julian Strother making that uh, deep three, and and um, we really like that matchup as a as a program, not just because of the history, mm-hmm. just like personnel wise, it's really good for us. So like yeah. going into that game, I felt just you could feel the confidence with our our staff and the players that. You know, we've seen them enough. We know all of their, you know, kind of actions. Obviously, it's going to be a tough out, but, like, we feel like we're a better team. Mm -hmm. And that basically proved all but a last minute and a half, right? Right, So we controlled that basketball game, and Julian Strother, one of the all-time, like, great tournament shots of all time. Yeah. 32-footer with a hand in his face, you know, down two or whatever it was, right? right? Down two. Down two, yeah. And buries a three, and... um, what did you think of the shot? Like, did you, were you, yeah, what were your thoughts? When- well, <laughs> so I, on the radio, I was like, we were in the double bonus, I believe, or in the bonus for sure, but I think we were mm. at 10. I was, that play is is a good play to to look for shot, but then rip and drive and put the onus on the officials to foul. Mm. We had like 12 seconds left. Yeah. I believe when he, first picked the ball up so by the time he shot it there were seven so we could have got it to four and then if you miss you get a chance to foul or you put the onus on the officials like i said and go to the free throw line Mm -hmm. um but we have to remember he did that against byu and won the game yeah you know it wasn't at the buzzer same similar thing but they did the same exact play against byu um so we've seen it before in reality like basketball wise it's probably not a great shot but also we hammered them on the glass. I think we were a plus 25. It was, it was a wild number. Yeah. It really was like a wild rebounding disparage uh, number um, disparity. And that's that goes in your mind too as well. It's like, well, if we, if we get this shot in rhythm, that's not really a terrible shot. Mm-hmm. Um, go get it off the glass and try to just put it in. So yeah. um, in theory, it's not a good shot. <laughs> I'm glad it went in, obviously. But... Crazy atmosphere, crazy game. Like mm-hmm. it, it's just up and down emotionally, and and you mm-hmm. know, for me personally, I'd sit there and go, "Fuck, I really listen to this shit again, man." <laughs> and I know they're gonna, people are gonna call me and bring it up, and I'm gonna have to go on radio shows, and yeah, you know, or I don't have to, but like whatever. Yeah. Um. So then he makes that. I'm like, sweet. Now they can stop talking about it, maybe a little bit. Um. 
and I say that not in a, like, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago, I'd be embarrassed to talk about it, but I don't really care. Like mm-hmm. my facial expression probably would have changed. Yeah. But it, it's at some point it's like, uh, can we move on? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll, I'll talk about it with people all the time, like around March, like mm-hmm. somebody interviews me, some national radio and I talk about it fine. Yeah. But also it's like, all right, we've beaten them three times in a row. Yeah. Like, give credit to these kids and blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that, that's where I am after a while. It's like, all right, let's, let's talk about it. Like I'm sure UCLA wants to talk about something else too. For sure, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. their program is pretty good too on the West Coast. Uh, they've, had some <laughs> good, they've had some good years recently as well. Mm-hmm. Corona has done a good job. Um, but yeah, so for that, for a personal and selfish reason, I was like, thanks, Julian. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, 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 it was, it was awesome. But sitting there, you know, we get, we get through the emotion and who, you know, everybody's like, fuck man. Yeah. Holy shit. And then you're like, oh yeah, we gotta go play UConn. We just watched them, at, you know, like three quarters of the game before. And I'm like, oh fuck. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. That's just cause they blew us out. But like watching them live was like, holy shit. This looks like, like a really good, uh, like a, NBA team, like as far as their defensive rotations, their length, yeah, how they swallow you up, you know, like when you drive, you're contested, and then even if you get kicks, you're getting a hand in your face, and then they come down and run like, you know, dribble drive motion stuff with screening, and then they have a guy they can angle basket, Sonogo, you know what I mean? It was just yeah. like holy fuck, and then the Hawkins kid, like if you, you know, if you tag roll on the weak side, he's gonna get a wide open three, other than they pinned away for him, and he's really good at coming off and catching and shooting. Um, it was like, uh, yeah, um, not saying we didn't have a chance. I didn't, th- you know, going into it, I was like, I told people, it was people, you know, walking around like, what do you think we got to do? I'm like, we better shoot the fuck out of it. And we didn't shoot the fuck out of it. Right. But like, that was going to be step one, mm-hmm. really shoot the shit out of the ball. Um, because you're not going to get much going to the rim. I thought the officiating was poor. And I'm not saying that if Drew doesn't get those early ones, UConn still wins. So I, I'm going to remove that mm-hmm. thought because I hate bitching about officiating um, as far as like losing the game. I think it's a loser mentality. Sometimes it happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't think it was this one of the situations, but getting a fourth early, it took the wind out of our sails for any chance to get back in the game in the second half early. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get to. I thought for it was sure. just a poor call. The play didn't affect, the ball went in the basket, so the play didn't affect anybody. I thought Jackson smartly like sold it, um, but the referees should just look at them both as the ball's getting inbounds and take your whistle and be like, they do this, but like, stop it, you guys. And then mm-hmm. the next time out, like, you know, the next media as you're both walking, like, next one of you guys does this, I'm dinging your ass. Would have ended up fine. Yeah. Drew Timmy stays on the floor. And, you know, but when he when he went out, I was like, oh, we're done. Yeah. You know, it just, just not that he was, you know, other guys couldn't do anything, but he just makes the matchups so much better as far as defensively. Now they could really, you know, climb up, uh, climb up into us on the perimeter. Mm. Um, but I was just really disappointed in, in that call. And then, I don't know, it's just some of the, some of the actions that these refs allow and then don't allow, you don't know what a, a clear foul is in college basketball anymore. And that's the, one of the issues. And, they just let guys beat the piss out of each other, and it's not geared for the offense. And I know people don't want to see um, an NBA game or their jacket shots. I get that aspect of it too. But like, when guys are just beating the fuck out of each other, and the scores in the sixties, like it's not good. It's not a good product, right? To watch. No, and it's then, not. So then you're like, so the skilled teams get a little bit, um, you know, disadvantaged, and you get these teams that are just big bruisers. And UConn was not that if that makes sense. They mm-hmm. had skill in offense. Mm-hmm. And they could score. So I'm not saying that. Um, but these refs just, it, it's so hard to like sometimes watch these games and I'm like, what is this guy thinking? Like vertical and he's out of the way. And then uh, it's just bad. It's just, it's horrible. And, and, mm. and I think that was a perfect example of not having feel for the moment. Mm. And I think the better officials should be graded on feel and context not just every right right or wrong call mm. like the context of that game would have been like all right i know his arm went up but the ball went in the basket and they're both kind of like running away from the play 
just fucking tell them to stop. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's all you have to do is like mm-hmm. stop. And like, you could look at Jackson. He didn't act like he got like dinged that hard. It was just like kind of those incidental, mm-hmm. like, uh, like the body language. It's like when a ball gets tipped out of bounds and you don't know which way it is, you can sometimes tell the players kind of give it away. They're like, oh, that was off me. And they start turning the other way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the players will tell you kind of what, if that was a dirty play or if that was just a, no- a normal basketball, oops, I accidentally caught you high, mm-hmm. but I didn't swing and you kind of brought your arm into mine. Um, so I was just that, that when that happened, it was like, ah, fuck weird. It took all, right. all the air out of the, yeah, it took room. It, exactly. It took all the air out of the sails and was like, all right, what, what spring chores do I got to start doing? <laughs> you know, that starts yeah. going through your mind. Like, all right, what do I got to do when we get home? Like, uh, I got to clean the garage, you know, like for real, like, all yeah. right, uh, <laughs> the ride's over guys, no more beer drinking every night and that type of thing. So, yeah, um, but yeah, it was a great, fantastic season, honestly, like, um, Elite eight again, like eight straight sweet 16s. Drew Timmy breaks the scoring record, which is a fantastic accomplishment. I thought Julian Strother had a fantastic year. Uh, Anton Watson had the uh, the most improvement year. I hope he comes back for a fifth. Um, Malachi Smith, I hope he comes back for a fifth as well. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm just really um, proud of these guys and how well they played and how well they um you know yeah as a team like i know we talked a lot we talk a lot about players on on the show but like as a team like where did the where did gonzaga improve the most over the season uh i think turning the basketball over remember at the start how bad it was yeah like and that was the pk 80 and yeah. whatever 85 or mm-hmm. whatever it was and then some of those games when we were in like the 14s to 18s a game and it was fucking terrible mm-hmm. like you couldn't watch it and it was like so frustrating because that's not just how good basketball players play, but also especially Gonzaga basketball teams or coach few teams is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. So uh, I think that's the biggest improvement. And then obviously their flow flow game offensively um, started to come together, but that that's with not turning the basketball over. So I think they're kind of the same. Mm. But I think that was the biggest improvement over the course of the season where we were really taking care of the basketball and getting good shots on goal and, um, you know, those turn out to be, um, you know, winning basketball plays. And, yeah, it it, uh, it was interesting to at the start of the year because there was a lot of, I mean, I knew they'd get that problem solved. How much was the question in my mind? I knew mm. they weren't going to be like 18 turnovers a night. Coach Few, when he would retire, or you'd fucking, you know, right. <laughs> cut all the players. Not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, he just sure. wouldn't let it happen. He but wouldn't it, let that happen. Yeah. yeah. But like, how much could you improve on it was the, the, the real question for me. Um, and so I thought our guys did a good job of doing that. Yeah. Do you, I mean, when I see the, the, the record 31 and six, like, yeah, I feel really like if good. you give me that, if you give us that at the beginning of the season, you take it. Absolutely. Like, 100%. It, and I, I mean, I think it's just, it was an, it's an like, it was a historic season for the Zags. It was having Drew back and mm-hmm. being able to see him play one last year and do a fourth year, especially in the NCAA where everyone complains about the one and done. So it's nice to see a you know player come in and be here for four years. Mm-hmm. So that was that was awesome. Uh, where do you think Gonzaga needs to improve next year? I know as the transfer portal and everything, but like, is there a certain area that like you think they just need to get better at? Well, they're going to have to improve uh, their inside scoring, like 22 <laughs> points a game or whatever is right. going to leave. Yeah. Um, so that interior scoring is going to be a question. Um, I think Nolan Hickman's got to score the basketball more next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a great job of taking care of it. Now he's got to add 10 to 15 points, 16 points a game. Mm-hmm. I really think he's got to make a jump scoring the basketball. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, so it'll be interesting. I mean, I've, I've heard good things about their – um incoming recruits but that's always yeah you take it with a grain of salt because they i mean who's gonna say they're shitty yeah for sure <laughs> it's yeah. like one of those deals where like you know that school's got a really good business school like when does everybody say like it's really shitty yeah and you never hear anything bad about a university that's true yeah <laughs> right yeah no it's well, they I got mean, a really good english department like, <laughs> when does anybody say like their math department fucking sucks mm-hmm. or whatever nobody ever says that <laughs> no one ever says that You're, that's so true uh 
I know we, you don't look, we don't look at recruits that much. I don't really look at recruits ever yeah. either. There's this kid who came in during January, June sake, yo, yeah. the, the Korean, mm-hmm. the South Korean. And I like started watching highlights of him. I've heard it's good. I haven't seen him, but like he's, well, he's six, eight, but like in the 2021 FIBA under 19 uh, tournament, uh, he was a leading scorer of that tournament. He scored 25 points a game, and he had 10 rebounds per game yeah. during the tournament. And and he's he looks, looks I guess, apart. Lo- he looks good. Yeah. <laughs> like, he looks good. I, I mean, the, he was playing. The, the highlights they showed a lot of was him playing against uh, uh, Chet Holmgren. Oh, and okay. um, I think he, like, scored 25 points against the U- U.S. that game. They got, I mean, South Korea got killed by U.S., but... Yeah. Uh, I think there are, you know, that's one thing about Gonzaga. They always are good at recruiting. Yeah, they always reload. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. Um, we never, knock on wood, mm. never have, like, rebuilding years, quote-unquote. Like, they always figure out how to wait at least to get the NCAA tournament. Obviously, Sweet 16s in the last eight years. So, like, yeah, that's the beauty of it. So next year, there's going to be a lot of question marks. But I think that's, I mean, it's obvious. they got to replace... Uh, 22 points a game yeah you know and then if anton leaves what he averaged 12 or something like that mm-hmm. so that's 34 right and then you go you know what i'm saying and then julian yeah. leaves so like there's a lot of question marks and there's some that we can't even answer on this show because there's so there's so much time mm-hmm. left with transfer portal maybe we do a summer update yeah once we kind of know the 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 um you know who's on the roster and who's coming in that then i could give people a better idea but right now my guess is as good as anybody else i mean yeah. honestly it's whatever you're reading on the internet's the same info i'm going to be getting because mm-hmm. i don't uh these the transfer portal so wide open it's so early that who knows who's coming in and mm-hmm. and and whatnot so like i said it, it was a great year 31 and 6 at the start of the year like people were losing their minds when we were 19 and 5 that's so true. Remember when we lost yeah. to LMU? I'm like, mm-hmm. God. Yep. The hell? Sky's falling. We yeah. Had lost at home. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're right, but also just calm down. LMU played a really good game. They were, I thought they kind of underachieved mm-hmm. in the back half of their season. For sure. Right. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, like that happens to younger teams too, or teams with, you know, not as much experience. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, I, th- as of now, there have been three current Gonzaga players that are entering the transfer portal: Dom Harris, Efton Reed, and Hunter Salas. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not I'm not surprised by Dom and Efton. Yeah, um, but I I guess I'm kind of in by Hunter. But yeah. like that seems to be the the Zag like Zag fans are are a little bit upset about that yeah. one. But what's your take on that? Yeah, I, uh, so you know, first we'll go with Dominic. Makes sense. He mm-hmm. hadn't played in two years, basically. Um, had an injury one year, so you know maybe he just fell behind the eight ball and couldn't get out of it. And it's hard to crack a rotation when you're not in the rotation, right? And mm-hmm. when, especially on winning teams, I've been in that situation before. Um, you know, so good for him. Go play somewhere, even if it's wherever it's at. Just go play, man. Who cares what? If it's Power Five. Just go play and enjoy basketball again. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's college basketball. Go enjoy it. Have fun. Um, and then Efton, I totally agree. Like. He was a five-star recruit. I think he was a McDonald's All-American or one mm-hmm. of those guys. In his mind, he has, you know, he's thinking of NBA probably still, and his yeah. family probably is. So, like, go somewhere where you're going to get minutes and play. But he's also got to improve. Like, he's yeah. got to be a better decision maker. He's got to be a better shooter. I know that sounds funny, but even bigs today got to be able to make an 18-footer. Like, it's just how it is. It's mm-hmm. how the game has progressed, and it just – if you can make that shot and then you can rim protect it, it just gives you so much, so many more options after your playing careers in college is over, NBA mm-hmm. or not, even in Europe. Like, you make good money in Europe. Um, so I don't blame him at all for leaving. I think he fell out of favor um, early in the season and just couldn't get out of it, and then Ben Gray kind of stepped mm-hmm. up and took that – spot yeah and he earned it so it's just one of those deals where um just didn't go his way so i don't blame it so hunter um i wasn't surprised and that's not just me trying to make myself sound good but i i I knew it was probably a 50 50 proposition that he leaves Mm -hmm. um before even the announcement like i was thinking that the whole year and the reason here's why okay so he was top 10 recruit i think he was number six uh, when he came in here um, 
So a lot of hype and a lot of expectation for the young kid. Mm-hmm. Um, he was only playing 12 to 18 minutes, whatever that range was, probably 16 a night. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he wasn't getting very many opportunities when he was playing offensively. Now that counter is as like, he's not a great shooter and stuff like that. I totally understand that. But if you're his parents and him, you're the number six recruit in the country and you've come off the bench two years in a row and average four points, like it's time to move on. Hmm. They're probably yeah. thinking NBA yeah. as well. Now, the counter to that is like, well, you're going to play a shit ton next year. They probably said that last year. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it it, it doesn't – and I'm not inferring that they lied to him, but mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, he, the, the lineups worked out the way they did. Yeah. It's, and it's not like Coach Few has favorites on purpose. Like, he – the players decide who plays. And mm-hmm. I know people think that's a weird concept or you really got to think of it, but, like, the players decide who plays in practice. Like, the – the coach is always going to play the guys who are going to make the most impact, mm-hmm. especially Coach Few. Yeah. So my point is, like, <clears throat> him deciding somewhere else to get more of an opportunity didn't surprise me at all. So and it sucks. I thought he was a great player, great kid. I've never heard anything bad about him. He's really quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, but he had some really impactful games, and he – um you know, showed a lot more improvement on the shooting, uh, scoring wise, like I mentioned. Mm-hmm. But if we're being fair, and I, I try to be non biased on the show, he averaged four points a game. Yeah. So but yeah, he had opportunities to score. Yeah. yeah so yeah. So I wish him the best, and yeah. I hope he he has a lot of success. And that's not just BS. Once you're a Zag, you're kind of are for life. There's guys in the program that transferred out that I see every once in a while that are we still consider Zags. I know that sounds weird to people yeah um but also um you know it's just it didn't work out here i guess yeah no i i just do do you so that the sentiment is then that he's probably he might be going to arizona like uh, it could be like does that i i don't i guess i should i guess i ask like that doesn't surprise anyone either i would imagine no uh and I don't think it would be an active recruitment right? from that program. I think it would just be, oh, you're leaving? Like, well, right. I recruited you, and I know you, and I yeah. can use you here. But also the counter that, like, they pretty much run, obviously, the same stuff, similar style. Sure, yeah. So, like, why would you if, you, if the style is the problem, and I don't know, yeah, then why would you go to somewhere the style? But hmm. um, Arizona is a, well, Gonzaga style, and Tommy's Tommy Lloyd style is a perimeter, obviously good bigs, but it's perimeter oriented, oriented as yeah. well. So I didn't even think of that connection right there. To be honest, that kind of made me wheels turn a little bit up top. But mm. I hope I hope the best for him. But like I said, like the expectations coming in were he's top ten recruit, and then like if you're his parents, you probably like, well, why is my son playing? And then yeah. at some point, you're gonna make a change. Um, and he, decided to make a change, and he's and he's probably looking at who's coming in too, and who he has to compete with, yeah. and like I'm sure that plays yeah. a lot into it. And I'm I don't really know everyone that's coming in. I know we have a good a couple of good guards that are coming yeah. in, but yeah, that has to play in the back of your mind. Like you can't you can't assume that you're going to play next year and then not play again. Like, yeah, in his in his case, yeah. So no, it, there's exactly, and, and again, it's the same thing I said with Dom Harris, like. Go where you can play. Mm-hmm. Don't just go to like, like I said, a power five just to fucking go there or whatever. Like go to a program where they're going to be like, yes, we want you on the floor for 25 minutes a night. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be allowed to shoot eight to 12 jumpers. and But you still got to get better. But like you're going to have a chance to kind of get where mm-hmm. you can get going. Well, if that means you have to go to like a smaller conference, fucking go there. The NBA doesn't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like For sure just go there and so that's that's the biggest hope i uh, our biggest unsolicited advice i'd give these guys and i give it to um high school kids that are getting recruited go where you can play that's the biggest thing you can Mm -hmm. always take out of any recruitment process don't punch above your weight class i love betting on yourself that's not what i'm saying but go where you can play Mm -hmm. so yeah that's smart uh i mean i guess like the the biggest question I have, and I know about is about Drew Timmy and him going into the NBA. I've they I like I when he announced this, and this, somebody me and my friends kind of shared with each other is 
in his announcement, he said, this will be my last year at Gonzaga. He didn't say anything about intentions of going into the draft. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's going to, you know, make a charge for that. Is there anywhere in your mind that thinks he might just transfer to a fifth year and play some <laughs> I, like play closer to home? That, that I didn't even think of that either. It's a wild concept. Um, I think he'd be upfront about that though if he was going to plan on doing that. But that that's a that's a I don't know if he'd call it a conspiracy theory, but that's a good, <laughs> it's kind of conspiracy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, a, it's a theory. Yeah. That, <laughs> You're, that's I don't know. I'm befuddled right now. I don't know how to answer that because he can do that. And, yeah, maybe he wants to go play close to home. But also, like, his parents have been to a lot of the games. Yeah. So I don't think that, that there's a starvation for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, again, this is just me, you know, hypothesizing. Um, I think he's done with just college basketball in general. And yeah. He wants I, to move on with his life. But yeah, that's wild. I didn't even think of the graduate transfer part or I just whatever. Think <laughs> of, I just think about the NIL and like how like if it's true, if he can, he, he can still get NIL in Spokane too, he's always going to be a name here. So yeah. it's not like he's is giving up that if he's not at Gonzaga next year. That's a good point, man. I didn't even, that's, that's crazy to think. Nobody's floated that though. I, I, I feel like, I feel like it, it, I feel like it should have been. <laughs> I know. That's that, I know. That's why it's it's. I'm like taken aback because that's a really good. I didn't even think of that because um, he didn't say that technically. But yeah, uh, just my best guess is he's he's done with college basketball. But yeah, watch. He's <laughs> it'd be funny in like three weeks. He's in a Texas uniform. With him. <laughs> right. Be kind of funny. Yeah. Um. So outside of the Gonzaga season, I know. You, you follow women's basketball because mm -hmm. your daughters play. And the Iowa LSU finals was like, had a 9.8 rating. Yep. It was a, one of the biggest, Highest. yeah, biggest watched women's basketball game of all time, I think. One of them, at least. I think it was. Yeah. Um, what's your, what was your takeaway from Angel Reese going up to Caitlin Clark? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I couldn't watch the game because it was oh, on. Okay. It was on during um, mm. one of my daughter's games. We had a tournament in Las Vegas. We were playing at the same time. I thought the this. I'll get to it. But I thought the time slot was weird. Yeah, no, that was the biggest complaint I, I, about it. it was I didn't at understand. Twelve thirty. Yeah, like I'm like that time slot didn't make any sense. And it was it's a Sunday. Obviously, there's not football on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and there was no like masters is an on so you're competing with that you know what i'm saying so i'm yeah. like it should have been like three pacific six eastern or whatever yeah it just was a weird time slot yeah um i didn't see i've seen the replays of it i think the context needs to be shown completely like from a wider angle mm -hmm. like was caitlin clark I, I don't get where the problem is with both of them because they were in two different games so yeah. like when Caitlin Clark was doing it, she was doing it in the South Carolina game. Yeah, and I th apparently she was doing it towards her bench, but it's a it's a close angle, yeah. so you can't you don't know who she's doing it towards. And then the Angel Reese um, is doing it towards her, but they just won, so it's like I don't know. I think <laughs> I don't like the undertones of it, to be honest with For you. Sure. That's I think it's a how do I put this a magic versus bird thing, and but not but you know what I'm saying. And I think everybody's trying to clickbait that. And For sure. After a while, it's like, all right, this just celebrate these two um, fantastic teams, great players that had great seasons, and people watched, um, you know, women's hoops at a, a you know a higher level than they ever have. Like, let's yeah. celebrate that. And like, now we're trying to do this. This person can say it, but this person can't. And you just look at the comments. And it's just so back and yeah. forth. Everybody go to your corner and fucking argue, say the same <laughs> thing over and over again. I didn't have a problem with it. Trash talk happens. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I think it, I mean, I think it probably, so fuck, man. It, it's you know. one of those things. I mean, I imagine it, I mean, I didn't watch it either. I just saw it happen and I was like, I, I wonder. You got to get the context. You got to get the context. You got to get the wide angle. Yeah. I, I know that sounds funny. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> The Caitlin Clark one was like, who, because they kept, people were like, well, she did it in the South Carolina. I'm like, well, who is she pointing it to? But yeah. no, I could never see the wide angle of for it. For sure. <clears throat> but then Angel Reese, that's her game is talking shit. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Like, that's what she does. And so, like, I don't know. I I don't know. Like I said, it, it turned into, it's trying to turn into a magic versus bird thing in a negative way. In a negative <clears throat> way. Yeah. I guess, in a negative way. I guess that's what kind of is. 
I don't like about it. And I, I think what's interesting about this whole thing though, is that it, I mean, Angel Reese is a sophomore and Caitlin Clark's a junior and they got to come back and they got to come <clears throat> and they're, and you've said this on the, I think you've said this on the show is like women leaving for the WNBA is not, is not really a thing that happens much. Mm -hmm. And now with NIL, it definitely probably won't happen. Yeah. And I'm interested to see that history play out again. They should have a series and they should play next year. Yeah. Like uh, <clears throat> the women's game has gotten so much <clears throat> more, lo <clears throat> excuse me, more love. Um, and rightfully so, because it's gotten more skilled. Don't mm. take that in the back uh, bad way. But like, if you look at the growth from eighties, nineties, this isn't every sport, but like eighties, nineties, like if you look at women's basketball now, like it's so, so much more skilled. It's so much more um, mm. enjoyable product to watch. Um, and then like Caitlin Clark is like part of the reason people tuned in because she looks like Steph Curry, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how like the type of shot she gets and then how unselfish she really is as well. And like scoring at that clip and, um, and then obviously LSU with, I was just surprised they'd never won a national championship, honestly. Mm. Like, cause I knew they were a powerhouse at one time in women's basketball. Mm. Um, but I was like, they never won a national championship, like honestly. And then obviously the first one. So hats off to them. And um, I don't know how the fuck though, like for getting into women's basketball, how do they, how are they a three seed? Yeah, I, you know I, what I'm saying? I was sitting there and the record was like 30, 30 and like two going into the tournament or something crazy. Yeah. Like, how the fuck is this team a three seed? And like, that's, that's the travesty part. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I don't know. It's different in women's basketball, the tournament. Um, I think the top, don't hammer me in the comments if I'm but like <laughs> the first two rounds are played at the one seeds home court. Yeah. So it's different Yeah, they um, seed, in that they, regards. They seed it. They seed it a lot differently. Yeah. They seed it differently. And I think it's smart. They play in, you know, home courts and it creates more buzz and I, there should be, you know, more people at game instead of neutral, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like, I think it's the right thing to do. Obviously they, they know that. The, the analytics and the metrics for that that's why they're doing it yeah um but again i didn't have a problem with um either of them like yeah honestly and that's not me trying to avoid the issue it's like people talk shit in basketball all the time and but now we're making it something that i don't think they intended it to be now everybody's weighing in on yeah trying to make it a social issue it's like just it's two fucking great girls, basketball players talking shit to each other, over and done with. Both great teams. Yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, LSU. Ha happens in the NBA all the time. NCAA, in the men's in the NCAA. The girls, girls, like, uh, yeah. girls basketball is no different, man. For they, sure. They're competitive. They play their asses off and they talk shit to each other and they just caught one on TV. Yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> it's no different. I mean, it's no it's, different. It, it is. It, it literally is no different. The yeah. girls. Um, like I said, uh, we play in games, and uh, I know this is a. a you know, a lower level, but in AU, like we've had girls talk shit. We've had technicals, intentional fouls, like girls play their ass off too. Yeah. So, and sometimes, um, cooler heads don't prevail and I get whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, for sure. You got anything else? No, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. I just wanted to get your final thoughts on the season. I know yeah. we kind of had them, but like, I, yeah. What, what do you want to, why don't you leave us what your th final thoughts? Uh, obviously, great season. Um, looking forward to next year in the re in the sense of a lot of new faces, and I think it's it's kind of more fun that way because then mm. you get to see the you know the, the the team gel together and and all that is cliches, but it's more fun that way. Mm. Um, I thought this is one of the best seasons of all time as far as a fan or a viewer. We didn't have a lot of 30 point blowouts. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So, like, you know, everybody complains about those and rightfully so, but we had a lot of closer games. And I thought that was more fun to call, more fun to watch, more fun to talk about. Um, you know, we got to witness history with Drew Timmy um, breaking the all time record, which I don't think a lot of people thought that record would be broken. Um, we saw an end of a, an unbelievable home winning streak mm -hmm. you know so there are a lot of historic things happened this year for sure um eight straight sweet 16s i think it's five out of eight last seasons in the elite eight or something like six out of eight yeah um so um just really happy for this group and for these guys and to be a part of it um as a radio broadcaster like honestly like um 
it's fun. Like I said, I get more enjoyment of watching teams gel together and get better as the season progresses. I know that sounds so cliche, but it's it's it there's there's mystery to it mm -hmm. behind it. Yeah. So I like that part of it, and I thought this year was no different. And hopefully, some of those guys that got a fifth year, like uh, Anton and, and Malachi, in my opinion, come back and and have more good seasons like they did last year and mm -hmm. improve on that and um so i'm just really looking forward to next year but you couldn't ask for a better uh, group of guys and and better season in 31 and 6 elite eight and lost to the national champion the eventual national champion yeah you know it's like fuck that's you know, <laughs> a pretty good year so um all in all i appreciate all the fans uh listening to our show you guys keep it alive obviously um tuning in um, we will be back next year um, with the third season. We're going to do similar style, um, you know, recaps. I think people like to listen to that, you know, what my thoughts are on the games. And it, it, it makes sense for us, too, to um, not have to pull people's teeth to do interviews or just time. It's not yeah. pulling teeth. It's the, the time and getting them in. And then we don't like to do Zoom interviews. That's part of it. We could do more of those if we have to in a pinch, but I just think that it's hard to get the – feel of how people are reacting to your questions and i kind of go off of that yeah um so yeah look forward to us next season uh we'll start right around the same time we did last year and um you know talk about gonzaga basketball and we'll still have interviews like we've had in the past and like we did with true this year and we'll get some more um ex gonzaga players in here and talk about hoops in general and um but i thought it was great uh, the new concept i thought went well and yeah. I'm glad people are listening. We th again, thank you to all of our sponsors for uh, you know, helping us make this happen and the listeners, and make sure you tune in next year. Let's do it again. Let's do it again.